Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays, The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. Randoms have been going very well indeed lately. Apollyon? I can live with that. I like a good void run from time to time. Who doesn't? Am I right? Winadel Z3RW. How we doing? So far, so good. I'm trying to, you know, remember earlier last year? I guess I was going to say earlier this year at first, but it's been a year of many hobbies for me. Remember when I was into cheese for a while? That was a cool month. I don't see it, by the way, as a, as a failure. That for a while I was like, I'm going to sample a bunch of cheeses. And then I did. And then I kind of, now I just go to the grocery store and I usually get like some single serving cheddar that's convenient for me to carry on the go. I don't see that as a failure, that I didn't become a, a fromagier, you know, or a, a sommelier of cheese, if that's even a thing that exists. Nor do I think it's a huge negative, you know, I mean, this one's a little bit worse, that I, you know, gave up biking. Didn't really give it up, it was more like I lapsed in it after I got uh, a bad illness and stuff like that, and, you know, it never really ran the Tour de France. But still, I gotta recognize I'm in a little bit of better shape today. As a result of that cycling. What else was I into last? I mean, there was all sorts of... Ah! I was an avid reader for a period last year. I've kind of fallen out of favor on that. You might think, you know, you, man, my man NL is... He's really tried on a lot of hats this year. He, he's... You might even be a little bit more negative. I know there's people that... Uh, they take pleasure when other people commit to doing something and then they fail. It's a bad look. But here's the thing, at the end of the day, what did I get out of that? Well, I got a newfound appreciation for several different types of cheese. I got a better optic on Jeopardy when it comes to questions about, you know, some of the books that I've read or the authors that I've read from. And a great respect for long distance cyclers. It's not really a failure, you know, we maybe didn't get to the, I'm glad we did that actually. I'd prefer the damage over the HP, although they're both pretty important here. You know, I, from biking, a little bit of better conditioning as well, and a respect for long-distance cycling, you know? You can't live your life in fear of, you know, you know, it's day one of learning a new hobby. What if I don't make the new Facebook? It's okay, just, you know, take it day by day. You got nothing to worry about. I see it all the time, and, you know, I'm taking a little break from coding myself, mostly because, uh... You know, I'm busy, yo. Like, like, legitimately. I gotta get back into it, but I'm allowing myself a little bit of a, a step off the gas pedal temporarily. But, you know, some people are like, you know, I wanna make the, a, a dragon base or a science based dragon MMO. What language should I learn? Well, I mean, like, you know, Elvish, I suppose. But then beyond that, it doesn't matter. You know, what you should learn first is uh, how do I make the program say hello world and then. You know, two years after that, how do I render a dragon's wings, you know? And then after that, you can worry about putting all the pieces together. But step one is like, ah, you know, you can't worry about whether or not you're going to fail. You got to tackle the challenges as they come and respect that, you know, even if you don't... And this, I'll say the same about working out right now. Even if I don't look like Zac Efron by the end of 2019, does that mean the working out was a failure? No, because even, you know, if I get more out of shape by the end of the year. Who knows what's gonna happen, you know? Could be injured or sick or, you know, mentally in a bad place, you never know. Even just having done it for a month is better than not doing it at all. As long as you can stomach the cognitive pain of, you know, not maybe reaching the goal that it looked like you were going to for a while. Anyway, we're getting a little, a little preachy at the start of this one, that's okay, you know why? Because we got piercing shots and we got good damage and, you know, we're rolling back prices all over the place, so put on a happy face. I think... I mean, we're gonna get, especially if we fight an easy boss like a pin, Larry Jr., uh, or something like that, something that gets bodied by piercing shots. This is not one such enemy, by the way, but... Um, it looks increasingly likely we will get a deal with the devil attempt, so it would be nice to get some HP, even though, yes, I did uh, turn up my nose at it on the last floor. And I'm actually glad that I did, because our, our damage is a little better, probably. You son of a gun. 
You dirty dog. Why, why do I say that the dogs are dirty here? That's one of the very rare circumstances in which we would have been better off picking up the HP and then going in. Instead of, uh, well, we could have done a variety of different things. We could have blown this up, gotten spirit hearts and gone in. We could have gone into our shop, gotten spirit hearts, assuming they're there, and gone in. Sorry, I shouldn't have even picked up that spirit heart because I'm going to go into this room in the hopes that we would get a red chest that would teleport us to the deal with the devil. Oh, this one. You're really grinding my gears. That hurts. Probably a secret room, though. Hey, what can you do? At the end of the day, all we gotta do is accept uh, it is what it is. We'll do our best to, to move onwards and upwards to bigger and better things. Take me away. Not being able to get Brimstone uh, in Mom's Knife does mean something, though. You know what it means? It, it means two things. It means I have a license to complain, which is very valuable in my world. And then beyond that, it also means... If we don't get a deal with the Angel that gives us either Sacred Heart or Godhead in 15 minutes, you're legally allowed to leave the class. I love that, I, I mean, it's kind of spread over the course of the past year or so. I feel like I've seen that meme a lot more frequently now. You know what, I'm going to Yara this for, for maximum Jim Cramer style mad money. It's pretty good. Um, not the best use of Yara, maybe, but I can live with it. Otherwise, you know, our normal use for Yara is either holding it for, you know, 10 floors, or holding it for a while, getting something better than forgetting about it. Something better immediately, I should say. Um, you know, the, the idea that if your professor is not in class within 15 minutes, you're legally allowed to leave. First off, you're legally allowed to not be there anyway in a lot of parts of the world. I mean, we've talked about it in PUBG. It's very, it's crazy to me, end to mouth, because he's, you know, we went to the same school. That, uh, you know, you can be a high school student in parts of the United States of America and not be allowed to leave school grounds. Like, I understand to some extent that, especially, I don't know, if you go to a huge school and, uh, I don't know. I mean, the the school is responsible for your well-being, for sure. I shouldn't have stood still there. But still, like, we were allowed to leave the school. And this isn't, like, a back in my day. You know, at the school I went to, we were allowed to leave, uh, you know... If we had no class, or we had a spare period, or we had a, a lunch break, we were allowed to leave, or maybe even encouraged to leave. Get out of the teacher's hair, come back in 40 minutes, you know? I definitely do not want to smelt that. Are you crazy? Give me this, and we'll start doing some re-rolls. Um, and it, it's, again, wild to me that when we bring it up, both Dan and Austin, and then like Team Unity stuff, they're like, well, if you let people leave the school, what's to stop them from just not coming back? Well, the answer is like, first off, you, you live with the fear of God that if your parents found out that you were skipping class, you would be reprimanded to some degree. And to be fair, I never, and this is true, I never skipped a single class in my entire high school career. I skipped more than I should have in college. Why did I skip in, uh, well, why didn't I skip in high school? Because our school was in the middle of friggin' nowhere. We had nothing to do. So, to be fair, when they let us, you're like, hey, you can go anywhere you want. You're like, oh, thanks for your generosity. You mean I can go to the convenience store across the street? And still, there were students who, like, they're like, bro, I'm not going to biology class. Oh, really? What are you going to do? Like, something cool? Nah, I'm just going to stand outside. All right. I can't help but think that somewhere later down the line, you might regret this decision. Like, maybe when we have a test or something. But, you know, you do you. It's a nice day. I don't blame you. I, well, I mean, I do, but, you know, I don't, I don't really care that much. No skin off my scrot at the end of the day. But it's wild that, you know... Literally, like, if you left your school, they'd be like, where's Austin? And then send a cop out after you. But I guess some parts of the world, they do have, like, truant officers, right? We, we never had those. 
I can't imagine. Like, I've had some anxiety in my life, for sure. But I can't imagine the anxiety of, like, getting... Because this is how it worked at our high school. Of getting your report card and having to give it to your parents. Knowing that your report card was going to say that you had... You know, you'd missed, like, 30 classes even though your mom drove you to school every single day. Knowing, like, getting the envelope and then opening it up and being like, Yikes. Mom's not going to be too excited about that one. And then she's like, uh, why does it say you've missed 30 classes? And you go, Mom, before I tell you this, I just want you to know I love you. But the thing is, I got someone pregnant. And then she's going to go, oh my god. And then you go, no, I, that was just a joke. But I did skip 30 classes of chemistry this semester. And then she'll be like, you know, you soften the blow. I promise. That's a known rhetoric trick. It's going to work out for you. There's no way she could legally be twice as mad. It's illegal. I'm not going to spare you the wisdom. The go to class wisdom. Like, if you're in high school, like, definitely go to class. That's obvious, I think. If you're in college, you know, I know the smarmy attitude because I had the smarmy attitude. Oh, it's a 70% final. I don't need to go to class. I'll just study for the final, and then, you know, they don't take attendance. While true, dangerous attitude. You're going to learn a lot less. You might do okay, but if you're in your college... I mean, this is a little hoity-toity. If you're in your college program just to do well, and not because you find some kind of enjoyment in it of any sort. And I know you're like, well, I'm, you know, in sanitation engineering. It's not exactly the most glamorous field. Yeah, but, like, you know, you should still... I'm not saying, you know, have some pride, you know? Take some responsibility I don't want any of these give me stats dude that's incredible um, I'm more going like you know if you're just gonna do something that's a drudgery for you you better be in the best paid field of drudgery is all I'm saying if you're like I hate this and you're you're getting a bachelor's degree in you know philosophy pivot man get out of there because if you're gonna be miserable you might as well be well paid <laughs> it's the that's the axiom of, of modern life I think I would rather you be happy and also I'm not gonna say well paid because I mean, obviously economically I don't know if we could all be well paid and also happy but let's say uh, happy and fairly paid that would be an optimum outcome for the the masses I think of which I am one um, anyway I'm just saying I'm interested to know what it's like at other schools like in high school were you allowed to leave or were they like well We'll freaking find you. I mean, we uh, routinely, in the especially like 11th and 12th grade, once people started to get their driver's licenses, we'd be like, hey, do you want to go, you know, like Dairy Queen for lunch? We'd drive for like 25 minutes, get to Dairy Queen. I'll take a chicken strip basket to go. And then they like pop it in the bag. And go, 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 go. We get back just in time to eat like a chicken strip. And then it's, uh, you know, fourth period English, you shove the whole thing in your backpack and the whole classroom smells like fries for the rest of the day. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. It's called growing up. I'm gonna smelt this. What? What? What happened there? How did we get the eternal heart? Is it a space bar item? I've smelt it in the... I don't know. I, I don't know what happened. But I do know I have more HP now. That's fine by me. Yikes. Um, because I feel like... Don't take this the wrong way, United States of America. But I feel like America has a decent amount of school incidences. I'm not trying to rock the boat. We all know what I'm talking about. But also, and I don't want to say ironically, because it might not be ironic. Instead, it might be the reason why. Or it might be related to the fact that these are happening. But like the most restrictive rules scholastically and i say this because we're right next door i'll take it for a tears upgrade so whenever you know i'm sure that you have the same thing like if you live in belgium you're like what are they doing in the netherlands that's not a very good belgian accent i didn't really think it through before i did it i i apologize and if you're in the netherlands you're like what are they doing in belgium it's so weird here we eat stoop waffle, there they eat Belgian waffles. So strange. We spell waffle E-L. They spell waffle L-E. <laughs> the Belgians are so crazy. I don't know. Am I hitting the nail on the head? 
And the same situation with uh, any time you talk to an American. And vice versa, I'm sure, but... Man, y'all spell color with a U, huh? What's up with that? Well, actually, <laughs> in the original Merriam-Webster's Dictionary produced uh, by the Oxford Free Press, color was spelled with a U, so it turns out you Yanks are indeed the ones who removed the letter, not us adding an extraneous letter as a... Mm, you know, that's the end of that bit, basically. Because I want it to be. But yeah, we, we left all the time. And we didn't skip. I mean, that's the thing. It's just, it's a little... I don't mean it as anything against them. It's a little insulting when Dan goes like, well, you know, if nothing's to stop people from leaving the school, why wouldn't people just leave class all the time? And I'm like, dude. It's, it's like the argument of like... I, I saw, it reminded me on Twitch, there's a streamer named Ammunition, and she's been on a crusade because uh, a bunch of her emotes have been copied. And that's the most lenient word I can use for the defendants in these situations. Um, plagiarized would be a stronger word. Ripped off maybe has a little bit more flavor associated as well. But um, she's been tweeting about the similarities between like her emotes and some emotes from some other Twitch affiliates and partners. And the similarities are very clear. Um, and in most of the cases, they definitely appear to just be the shell of her emote traced over and maybe like a hairstyle change for what, whoever the streamer is. I'm not putting blame on the streamer. You know, they might have commissioned an artist and the artist was like, you know, hey, I can just do a trace job and get a quick payday. Beats me, right? But um, there were people in her mentions. And the case is pretty clear, in my opinion at least. There were people in her mentions that were like, there's no law against copying emotes and, oh, you don't, you don't have a trademark on your emotes, so that means people can steal them. And I'm like, what do you, what do you think you live in? Do you think you live in like a, a board game? That's not how the law works. Well, Your Honor, uh, she didn't say finders keepers on her clear intellectual property, so it's like the people who, who are like, and by the way, it's obvious, I think, you should read every contract that you're ever going to sign. No doubt. But there's people who are like, you know, they think that a contract is 100% written law. And even if the contract was like, if you sign this, you get, you have to give me your organs. When it's actually like a non-disclosure agreement for Earth Defense Force 5 Iron Rain, you know? They're like, well, he signed it. Uh, so uh, it wouldn't really be fair if he didn't give up his organs. I mean, contracts are indeed the basis of... Uh, you know, our legal... Si no, there's like a... There's a limitations in place. Like, reasonable intent and stuff like that. that. You know. If you wrote in, like, super tiny font. Like, and by the way, if you sign this, I get your house. And I think younger people... And I thought like this when I was younger. Um, to some extent. But I think they, they think that contracts are, like, another party's way of tricking you. It's like... Yeah. Hey, 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 do you think he saw the part where we get to harvest his organs? Like when I was a kid, or not a kid, but like a teenager, I would go, you know, I open a bank account, for example. I would go to the bank and they'd give me a contract to open a savings account. And I would read every word of the contract. By the way, good habit, but what am I going to do? I'm, a, I'm, I'm not shaming myself for this. I'm just saying it's probably a waste of time in this unique situation. It's not like, first off, I'm not opening, uh, you know, a $500,000 line of credit. I'm literally coming in with like a $50 bill and being like, I would like to give this to you, but I want it back maybe at some point. And, you know, they hand me a contract and I'm like, well, I'm gonna have to pass this one by my lawyer before I tell you yes or no to this business. You just sign the contract. It says the same thing they all say. You know, a bunch of legal mumbo jumbo that's like, you know, in the event of an Old West style robbery, the CDIC, which is our version of the FDIC, will honor, you know, all of the deposits you made into this bank. And also, you know, if you give out your password over MSN Messenger, we're not gonna honor that. That's on you. It's all fair stuff. But I was pouring through it because I was like, I don't know, maybe they, somewhere in this contract, might as well take it. They might have written in, you know, and we get to kill you if you sign this. Oop, joke's on you. I think people have, uh, you know, an interesting 
ideas sometimes of how the law works, you know? There was no sign saying don't steal, so how was I supposed to know? Oh, is this... Was this the grocery store's property? I thought maybe somebody had just left some food in the aisle, stacked nicely and with a price tag next to it that just happened to reflect the exact product code of the food that I am imbibing as we speak. Oh, I'll take it. Absolutely. This is a great run. No brimstone, mo no mom's knife, no problem. No brimstone, no mom's knife, no problem. What do we got at Boss Rush? Rotten Baby would almost be tempting, but I don't think it's necessary. Anyway, so, you know, skip school and don't read any legal contract that passes in front of you. No, that's not what I'm saying. Quite the opposite. I'm just saying, you know. I, I use this as a metaphor all the time, but it's always like, you know, it reminds me of when people uh, use, like, the stock price of a game publisher to justify something. They're like, you know, well, Pikmin 3 came out and Nintendo's stock price jumped 1.4%. I'm like, you, you don't know what you're talking about. I mean, those figures are correct, but that doesn't mean it jumped because of this necessarily. Sometimes, yes, uh, i.e. Apex Legends. But also sometimes, you know, it's related to stuff you have no concept of. Earnings calls. Uh, you know, an incredibly, uh, like a, an investor with a high share of the company needs to get more liquid, so he offloads a bunch of stock and it, it freaks people out or something like that. Even I don't know what it's all about, but I'm like, it's a bunch of, you know, neophytes, myself included, on the internet being like, well, Activision stock price fell $3 today. What does that mean? What's their stock price? I don't know, but it fell 3 bucks, like from 1000 or 990 so I don't, it's $3, dude. It fell. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. Print the story. It's just uh, there's a whole lot of bluster over stuff that ends up sometimes being irrelevant. That's my two cents. <coughs> All you need to know, dude, I've picked up so few items. All you need to know at the end of the day is that you're in the clear as long as at the bottom of your website or in the footer you put original content uh no copyright infringement intended no jury in the land would convict you yes your honor um it appears that he did rip nine metallica albums and put them up on a torrenting website to be downloaded for free our estimated uh downloads for that are in the hundreds of thousands potentially uh, amounting to a net loss of revenue for our clients in the tens of millions of dollars uh Objection, Your Honor. Have we considered Exhibit F, where the client says no copyright infringement intended? No, 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 no copyright infringement intended. Your Honor, uh, permission to strike this conversation from the record. Barrister Solomon, again with the dirty tricks. The judiciary disavows your suggestion. And may God have mercy on your soul. The legal system of this great nation was founded on the principle that if you say you didn't intend for copyright infringement, you cannot legally be prosecuted. If we allow convenient lapses in our principles, then what is the law? but one man's opinion against another, instead of a codified set of rules and regulations that govern and dictate how we should behave as a society. Get along with one another. The motion to strike that from the record refused. The defendant is found not guilty, and hell, you're invited to my barbecue this weekend. You can bring the tunes. <laughs> That's the end of that bit. That's how I'm, I'm, I'm ending bits now, is by going, that's the end of that bit. It's not for you, uh, it's for me. Because if I don't say that's the end of the bit, I'm just gonna keep going. And I could I could freestyle that conversation. I'll, now we're at the barbecue. And he's calling a cab while she's having a smoke. And he's taking a drag. Now he's going to bed, and his stomach is sick, 
and it's all in his head. No copyright infringement intended for this song. Brandon Flowers, go away. That's the end of the bit. Yo, this run is good. Or is it? Never mind. No, it's it's still good. I've been... I mean, you can tell just from looking at the side of the screen. I have taken, like, very few items on this run. And many of the items that once were taken were out of necessity rather than desire. You know, so I just didn't have a charge for, for some of them. Please get him. Thank you. So we've only picked up a few items. We picked up an awful lot of statistical improvements. It was a very, very good fight. And, uh, you know, wouldn't mind some spirit hearts, to be honest. Alrighty. Two pills. Pretty much the same thing. Yeah, those are both very good and great and meaningful additions to the game at large, I would say. Thank you. Kathy Drowell. I don't watch television. I'm sorry. Okay. 3 HP is always dangerous. You know, two bad rooms puts you in a in a rough spot. But we do also have 14 damage. Oh, we're taking that. Um, 14 damage, 5 rate of fire. That's good enough. That's good enough to, to win. I don't want to say any run, but almost any run. And I will take Rune Bag. I think that, you know, getting an algae is at the right time. Oh, Lord. It can make a lot of difference. Getting a Yera before we go down. Getting a Perthro before we go down. Or soon after. There's something there. <clears throat> oh, right. There's three of you. This is getting out of hand. Hey, Sunday, by the way. Uh, you know it's a good episode from a commentary standpoint when it takes me that long to get into what day it is? That's normally my go-to. That's like my... That's my jab combo. Mix them up with the, uh, you know, what day is it? Hit them with a cross-up later that says, uh, you know, here's how you evaluate whether or not you've been successful in life. Nothing. Uh, but it's good. It's a Sunday in February. Years going by pretty quick. It's still the doldrums. I don't. I don't want to insult any months by saying that they're uh, you know better or worse than others. January, February, March, April kind of sucked though. May is like it, it, I'm positing something. I'm not saying this to be negative. Hear me out here. I think May is the first good month. April or even March, you know things start getting warmer, but they're not warm. They're not pleasant. May is the first month where you can expect to have what I would call good weather. Prove me wrong. March and April do have a holiday. May only has a holiday in some countries, including Canada. We have Victoria Day. Isn't that weird? I don't know what accent that was. Certainly was not British. Um, or Victorian, for that matter. But, uh... Yo, that was lucky. April... And it, here's the thing. Tax... You know, if you don't know where I stand politically, that's by design. Tax is a good thing. Doing your tax returns and paying your tax in North America sucks. There's probably parts of the world... I, you can't shake a stick without somebody from Scandinavia being like, In my country, the government just says, Pay us this much money, and then you send a check, and they send you a picture of their smiling faces. That's cool. That's not how we do things here. Here, uh, especially if you're self-employed, is a torturous arithmetic exercise um, with, a, with a man or woman in a suit that goes, you know, they pull out like a $5 receipt from 16 months ago and go, hey, was this coffee, did this coffee fuel any business, do you think? You think we could argue that this macchiato, the extra pump of espresso, surely you got that um, because you, you wanted a little pick-me-up so you could do more business, right? Is it pot? If you were on the stand in a court of law, could you say under oath 
that this was a business coffee. That's how we do it here. So that, you know, just for that, April kind of sucks. If you got audited, could you reproduce the coffee in its entirety? What percentage of your dinner would you say was a business-related conversation? They also, and I, I'm not messing with accounts, okay, for a number of different reasons. I don't think accountants have a boring job. But what they do have is an advertising campaign that aggressively in Canada... I don't, I don't know what it's for. I guess it's just to raise awareness of accounting in general. Instead of, now that Quicken's out and, you know, people are like, you know, I need to choose TurboTax. Um, but what I was going to say is there's these ads that are like, you think being a CPA is boring. It's all spreadsheets and Excel and, you know, amortization tables. That's what you're, you're, you're wrong. Because, like, is it uncool to work at a cupcake shop? And I'm like, well... If you're in the back of the cupcake shop, tabulating receipts, and then somebody else is at the front baking the cupcakes, they got the cooler job. I'm sorry to tell you. I hadn't thought about it until you brought it up. But now that you ask, sure, yeah. Is it, is it boring to be the accountant for the Vancouver Canucks? Well, I mean, they didn't write too many books where... You know, a kid accomplishes his dream of being the accountant for the Denver Broncos. You know, he, no, the kid becomes John Elway. Anyway, again, I'm, I'm kind of a boring dude, and I like it that way. I think I could be an accountant. I think I have the, I, I don't have the skills yet, but I, I have the, uh, the acumen for that. I mean, I guess maybe not because I'm not detail oriented enough by default, at least. I'd have to work on that. But um, what I'm trying to say is I'm not hating on you for your job of being an accountant. All I'm doing is saying that, you know, your advertising campaign is happening right now. Maybe it's raising awareness, but it's also raising awareness of the fact that, you know, it's not that exciting of a job in principle. My two cents. May is the first good month, in my opinion. That doesn't mean good things can't happen in the other months. But like May, June, July, August, here's the thing. I used to be like, summer sucks. You know, yeah, you get the time off from school, but, like, I don't like the heat. Well, now I live in a place where the weather's pretty nice year-round. So I, it doesn't get too hot, doesn't get too cold. Um, now that I'm an adult, I'm like, the summer is beautiful. You know why? I don't know if you've hit this point in your adulthood yet. Maybe you have, maybe you're way past it, and you think I'm talking down to you by asking if, it, if you've hit this point in your adulthood yet. But in the summer, well, like, January, February, March, April, and probably to some extent May. And then, uh, I mean, that's basically it. That is when business takes place. Starting in June, one in three people is away from every office every week. So you can, oh, I can't do that. That's Susan's file and Susan's in Cancun. And then, you, then you're then you like, well, when Susan, when does she get back from Cancun? June 4th. Well, on June 3rd, I'm going to Ithaca for the dental conference. So I can't, well, okay, I'm back on June 8th. Well, well, that's when Susan is training an intern. Well, mid Wednesday intern trained. Oh, on the, so probably by the twentieth or so. But then she's going to Aruba. Oh, when's she back? Oh, she's back July first. July first is Canada Day. You, you get the idea. Let's just do it in January. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya.